and your deputy. Members of the House of Assembly that are here, I salute all of you, the chairman of the party, government functionaries that are here, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I will say that these things you are doing in Abi is for us, the business people, a business to be moving. To be moving as fast as possible. When drugs can into this place, it will discharge quickly and move out from this place. There will be no need for any other order. Any one that our vehicles will not become to Java during the daytime. Because we have room now where we can move in and move out without problem. So we thank you, Your Excellency. You are great. I know if there was a lot of rules that are going to be built, it is for us. That's the only way our businesses will strive. Thank you, and God bless you.
Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, commerce, mines and industry, to reach all of you. I've titled my speech today, Playing to Our Fullest Strength. One of the promises we made to Ndiabia in our manifesto <laughs> is that when elected governor, we shall work tirelessly to mobilize and deploy the necessary resources to drive the holistic infrastructural development of ABA. As we noted several times in multiple campaign stops, a very important governance objective for us shall be to develop ABA to become a model city that's the which will be commissioned momentarily. Our gathering this afternoon is significant on several counts. The first is that it is a way of letting Abians in general and in Diaba in particular appreciate how deeply committed we are to fulfilling the promises that won us the enduring support of the people, even in the face of heart rendering disappointments and frustrations. Additionally, this commissioning ceremony is a way of announcing to the world, to businesses at home and overseas, that the holistic restoration of our bank has begun, making it known to savvy investors that the moment they had long waited for is here. Abba is open for business, and all who have eyes for growth opportunities must begin to start setting up their shops now. Very importantly, we have gathered to remind ourselves that we are unconquerable, a resilient community, and a collection of individuals who know how to pick themselves up after periods of setbacks. The much we have collectively achieved since we were sworn in in May, we are eloquent testimony to what we are capable of doing a free people who can never be enslaved by man or spirit. Our motivation in government is to create the right environment for individuals to live out the full expressions of their dreams, support the growth of enterprises, and set up a safe heaven for legitimately profitable and sustainable investments. We have therefore spent every waking hour since May 29 this year articulating programs and policies, determining the best investment paths and partnerships that can help us achieve the fundamental objectives that motivated us into seeking to serve the people as elected officials. Restoring the networks of urban roads in Aba and Omoaya for us was the strategic takeoff point. Our conviction is that quality roads are not just critical for quick movement of people and goods, but are indicative of the determination of the government to welcome people and businesses, enhance trade and commerce, and open new frontiers of low cost production in ways that support micro, small, and medium scale enterprises. In the last five months, we have strategically awarded contracts for the reconstruction and rehabilitation of some of the most important roads in the state because we cannot drive the type of economic rejuvenation we seek if our most important roads are in bad shape. Keeping to our promise during and shortly after the election, we have contracted Julius Vega to fix Port Harcourt Road, taking adequate measures. are permanently addressed. One of the roads that we are commissioning today, which is this one, MCC Road, was delivered by another reputable construction giant, like you have heard, the China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation, CCECC, whose director has just spoken to you. With the beautiful street lights and durable engineering works, In Omoaya, we brought in Krembo, a construction outfit 
that has proven itself again and again in delivering quality infrastructure projects across the country. I'm very satisfied so far with the progress of work on the road and remain optimistic that it will be delivered on schedule to ease traffic congestion, especially as the ULETA approaches. We are working with these resource-rich construction firms because of the economic and social importance of all the roads be reliable. Permit me at this point to say that why we shall continue to go for the best in all our road projects, whether in rural or urban area, there is also an ample room for indigenous contractors. We are not ignorant of the fact that there are very competent local construction companies that can deliver on projects of all sizes. May I now bring it to the knowledge of the public that we are currently doing business with some of them. Umimo Road was delivered by a competent Nigerian contractor called Ferrotex Construction Company Limited. Cemetery Road Phase 1 and Cemetery Road Phase 2, which is under construction, and of course, Somuma Road, which we have just started construction, are being handled by Rock Resort Group. Thank you. Rock Resort Group is also another indigenous contractor. We have also resourced our direct labor agency under the Ministry of Works and it is competently handling a few roads, including Jubilee Road, Abba, in a cost-effective manner. We hope to make concessions for several others who meet certain basic requirements as we progress. The assurance I want to give you today is that there will always be a space to accommodate all who have established track records of excellence in delivering quality civil engineering projects. I've received pockets of complaints from well many individuals asking when we shall turn our attention to the difficult roads across rural communities in the state. My response to them is this, and it is very simple. No part of the state shall be neglected. A few economically important roads in some local governments have been awarded. At the same time, we are working very hard to reconstruct several other roads across about nine local governments later in the year through a special multilateral funding arrangement which gives the state a pathway to fix roads in rural communities to improve agricultural production and produce marketing. If there is one thing you will take home from our engagement today, it is the assurance that across our various communities this December, our brothers and sisters returning home from various parts of the world for the Christmas and New Year celebrations will see clear signs that indeed our promise of a new Abia is alive. Things deteriorating. This is the time to return. What we are building shall surpass what has ever been built, and we want you to be part of it. In addition to building quality roads, we are also investing in technology hubs that will give our budding tech entrepreneurs and enthusiasts the opportunity to hone their skills, build growth networks, and leverage the resources of the state and its partners to scale up their businesses secure offshore jobs, and generally build something that would add new depths to, Abia, to Abia's economic orientation. When completed, the Abia Industrial and Innovation Park in Owaza will drive the next phase of Abia's growth. With plans for setting up modular refineries and petrochemical plants already completed, there is no guessing what the future holds for Enimba City and its environs. May I remind us that great things will always come at a cost. While we are not unmindful of the economic difficulties in the land, we still encourage you to pay your taxes as and when due, because you owe it to yourself as a good citizen. 
thankfully ours is a government that would make the most judicious use of every penny in the public treasury. Our efforts at improving the stock of physical infrastructure across the state, urban sanitation and security will be frustrated without adequate financial resources and active cooperation of the citizens. The roads we have come to commission today, in addition to improving economic and social activities in our beloved university, are proofs that we shall remain faithful to our promise to you and to future generations of Ndiabia. In conclusion, the days of mediocrity are long gone. We must now begin to play to our fullest strength, delivering results where it matters most. Ultimately saying to it that our dream of making Abia the number one state in Nigeria on all major development indices is realized in the medium to long run. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. I'm in the blessings and favor.